Uh oh. Mm -hmm. So to me, the two biggest criticisms of Trump is the the fake elector scheme. Out of that whole 2020 election, the fake elector scheme is the thing that really bothers me. Nice. And then the second thing across a larger time scale is the um, the counterproductive Name division calling. that he's created in, uh, let's say, our public discourse. Nice. What are your top five criticisms of Trump? Okay. Top so five. Number one, it, I have the same exact thing as you. The fake elector scheme is unacceptable, totally dis disqualifying. So the fake elector scheme was a literal coup attempt. Yes. So he doesn't win the election. For folks who don't know, I, I need to explain why it's a coup attempt because you just throw out words and then people get triggered by the words and then they go into their separate corners, right? So the January 6th rioters, they were not gonna keep the building. That was not a coup attempt. It's not like, oh, the MAGA guys have the building. I guess they win, right? No, that was never gonna happen. So what was the point of the January 6th riot? It was to delay the proceedings. Why did it matter that they were going to delay the proceedings? Because if you can't certify the election, they wanted general confusion and chaos so that the Republicans in Congress could say, well, we don't know who won, so we're going to have to kick it back to the states. Yes. In the states, they had the fake electors ready. And remember, the fake electors are not Trump's electors. There's both candidates have a slate of electors, Biden's electors and Trump's electors. They go to the Trump electors first in this plan and the tr half the Trump. This is not technically correct how he's explaining it, but it doesn't matter. We got the idea right. We got the idea. OK, that's all that matters. Electors go, no, I'm not going to pretend Trump won the election <laughs> when he didn't win the election. So they're like, shit, now we got to come up with fake electors. OK, so they enlist these Republicans to go, yeah, I'll pretend Trump won. Right. And so they sign a piece of paper that's fraud. And that's why a lot of them are now being prosecuted in the different states. And so the idea is the Republican legislature legislators then go, we're sending these new electors in and we think Trump won Arizona and Georgia and Wisconsin. Right. That was the idea. That was the plan. And then you come back to the House at that point when there are two different sets of electors, the rule, constitutional rule is the House decides. But the House decides not on a majority, because the Democrats had the majority at the time. They decide on a majority of the states. They vote by state. And the Republicans had the majority of the states. So in that way, you steal the election, even though Trump didn't win, you install him back in as president. That is a frontal assault on democracy. And I loathe it. And then Trump on top just blabbers out. Well, sometimes you have, if there's massive fraud in an election, in other words, I think I won. I don't even think that. I'm just saying that I won, right? He says you can terminate any rule, regulation, or article even in the Constitution. No, brother, you cannot terminate the Constitution because you'd like to do a fake elector scheme and do a coup against America. Fuck you. But is he really okay, going to do so it? I'm never going to allow this wannabe tyrant to go back into the White House and endanger our uh, system. And so you want to endanger the corrupt system? I'm the guy, okay? Let's go get that corrupt system and tear it down. If you want to endanger the real system, democracy, capitalism, the Constitution, then I'm your biggest enemy. So I'm never going to take that risk. And you see it every time he goes to talk to a dictator. Look, guys, I'm asking you to be principled, right? I asked the left of that, and we drive away some of our audience when we do that. So we got the balls to do that to, the, to our own side. So for the right wing, be honest. If it was Joe Biden or Barack Obama or Kamala Harris that went and wrote, quote, unquote, love letters to a communist dictator who runs concentration camps, you would say, communist, we knew it. Look at that. And Trump literally says about Kim Jong-un, we wrote love letters to one another. I fell, we fell in love. If a Democrat said that, They'd be politically decapitated, right? They, they, their career would be instantly over, right? But Trump, whenever it's Xi Jinping, Vladimir Putin, I'm not, don't get into Russia, 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 but it's just that he's a strong man, right? Uh, uh, Kim Jong un or any uh, Viktor Orban, Duterte in, in the Philippines, anytime it's a strong man that says, screw our constitution, screw our rules. I want total loyalty to one person. Trump loves him. He loves him. He said once, he's like, oh, it's great. You go to North Korea or China 
And when the uh, leader walks in, everybody applauds. And everybody listens to what he says. That's how we should be here. No, brother, Communism. that's not how we should be here. You hate democracy. You want to be the sole guy in charge. As a populist, you should loathe Donald Trump. I agree on the fake election scheme. Can you, steel man, and maybe educate me on... Um, there's a book, Rigged, that I started re reading. Alpha, Jank Uyghur dominates beta, Lex Prima. They didn't... He didn't really argue back at all. I don't... I feel like this thread title is autistically provocative, but okay. Seven days for being too provocative. Okay. We're all going to be gone in about, what do we have, three years left? 12 years, remember? So in about three years, let me say, we do have a problem, though. And groceries, food has gone up at levels that nobody's ever seen before. We've never seen anything like it, 50, 60, 70 percent. You take a look at bacon and some of these products, and some people don't eat bacon anymore. And uh, we are... <laughs> it's, I'm so sorry. Is bacon the most expensive meat that you buy in the grocery store? Is that true? I, I thought it was usually, like, fucking either your steaks or, like, ground beef. Is ground beef more expensive than chicken? Is bacon... The, is bacon... Is that the most expensive one, or... Bacon has never been expensive. Uh, ground beef is cheaper than chicken. Chicken is cheapest usually. Well, lamb is expensive as fuck. Ground beef is slightly more than chicken. Bacon is expensive as fuck. Bacon is cheap as fuck. Brown, ground, bre bleh, ground beef is pretty cheap usually. Ground beef is probably more expensive than chicken. Bacon is expensive. Chad is just retarded. Bacon is cheaper than ground beef where I live. Okay. The oil production, the oil started going crazy. That started the inflation. Then they went back. They said, go back to where Trump was. The problem is that we would have been three times that level right now. We, were, we would have been so dominant over Russia and uh, Saudi Arabia. Look, Saudi Arabia, Russia, a lot of oil. We would have had more. You know, we had something in Alaska, Anwar. Like, how can you quote anything Kamala said? Listen to this fucking answer. Holy shit. What the fuck are we even saying here? What is? What are we even... What do we even say? If this guy was black and was the guy that made Jesus walks, I would be assuming that he's having a manic episode right now, okay? But because he's Trump, he gets away with being insane. What are we even talking about right now? The oil production, the oil started going crazy. That started the inflation. Then they went back. They said, go back to where Trump was. The problem is that we would have been three times that level right now. We, were, we would have been so dominant over Russia and uh, Saudi Arabia. Look, Saudi Arabia, Russia, a lot of oil. We would have had more. You know, we had something in Alaska, Anwar that we that i created i mean ronald reagan wanted it you remember ronald reagan wanted it they all wanted it and i got it approved <laughs> we hear they ronald reagan I got it approved. and they the first week in office they turned it back they said no it's the biggest site possibly in the world could be bigger than saudi arabia well we're going to start that up we're going to become the energy capital of the world we're going to pay down our debt and we're going to reduce your taxes still further and your groceries are going to come tumbling down and your interest rates are going to be tumbling down and then you're going to go out you're going to buy a beautiful house okay you're going to buy a beautiful house <laughs> that's called the american Wait, what it in office they turned it back. They said, no, it's the biggest site possibly in the world. Could be bigger than Saudi Arabia. Well, we're going to start that up. We're going to become the energy capital of the world. We're going to pay. We are. I'm pretty sure we already are the energy capital of the world. Pay down our debt. We're going to pay down our debt. So does that mean higher taxes or lower spending, which is going to have a harmful impact on the economy, at least in the short run? And we're going to reduce your taxes. Still reduce your taxes. So we're going to lower the debt. We're going to pay off the debt and reduce taxes. Where the fuck are we getting the money to pay off the debt from? Further, and your groceries are going to come tumbling down. And we're bringing down the cost of groceries. Amen, brother. And your interest rates are going to be tumbling down. And we're doing it all with lower interest rates, too? <laughs> what? Where are we getting this money from, Trump? And then you're going to go out, you're going to buy a beautiful house. Okay? You're going to buy a beautiful house. My God, we can just do everything. Holy shit. We can get you low interest rates, pay off the debt, no taxes, okay? No uh, horrible impacts on the economy or military, anything else from cutting all the spending, I guess. Like, Jesus, the magic money tree, yes. American dream. The American dream. Thank you. Mr. President, I, I want to ask you a question about national security, but first I think it's important to point out what Luke is talking about. The cost of groceries, the cost of gas, the cost of housing, mortgages, rent, everything has gone up. Kamala Harris's plan that she's announced is government price controls. I think it's important to touch on ABC reported Kamala got a bump in polling pre-DNC, but not after. Do you think that's a cause for concern? Also, do you think Dems should get more active with canvassing leading up to the election? Ah, uh, whatever works, works. If canvassing helps, then fucking canvass. I think we're doing a few events for that. Um, I don't know how many huge more, like, more bumps I expect to get. It's probably going to happen more narrowly as we get closer and closer to the election. Hopefully. You just laid out your plan. What's going to happen if Kamala Harris institutes price controls? So that's a communist. <laughs> that's communist. I love the level of discourse we have with these conservative events. Sean, 
You just laid out your plan. What's going to happen if Kamala Harris institutes price controls? So that's a communist plan. It's never worked. And it's been tried by others. Believe it or not, Richard Nixon tried it. A lot of people tried it. It's been tried many times, and it always leads to the same failure. Uh, tremendous inflation, lack of product. You don't have anything. The stores are not stocked. It has never worked. It's called control. They want control. And, uh, you know, it just, it's been so often. And everybody that comes in, they say it. It sort of sounds great. We're going to go price control. Actually, when she announced it, she got absolutely slaughtered by even Democrats because it doesn't work. It's, it's a known loser. So now she doesn't talk about it. Do you notice she doesn't talk about climate change anymore? She's not talking about it. you know why? Because people don't want to hear it. They want to find They want to live a good life. They want to live a life. They don't want to stop your industry with climate change. They used to call it different things, global warming. Global warming. Remember, that wasn't working because it was getting a little bit cooler. So they said, what are we going to do? We'll call it global cooling. No. So they came up with the word, words climate change. Because but the climate's always changing, guys. Isn't the climate supposed to change? That takes care of everything, it, climate change. The climate's changing. But according to them, we're all going to be gone in about, what do we have, three years left? They had 12 years, remember? So in about three years, let me tell you, we do have a problem, though. It's climate change, but a different kind of climate change. It's called nuclear global warming we can say that's global warming and if we don't have a smart president you know you have five nations now with True. massive nuclear power some have very massive including us and russia somebody asked me to steal man what he's saying here he, i think he's trying to cleverly like weave in the idea that a, nu a global world war three nuclear war would lead to a nuclear winter so he's trying to like tie like the idea of nuclear winter into nuclear global warming it's just but it's, it's just it's retarded china's behind way behind <laughs> within four or five years they'll catch up and we don't want them to catch up. Look, we, the biggest problem, in my opinion, the biggest problem our country has, the biggest problem the world has, is nuclear weapons. They are a destructive force, the likes of which nobody has ever seen before. And we have to make sure they're never used. We have to make sure it's not going to happen. You're, you're exactly right. You brought up Ronald Reagan already. Ronald Reagan famously said, a nuclear war can never be won and should never be fought. I think it's interesting you talked about climate change, Mr. President. The Democrats and Kamala Harris, they were quick to talk about how climate change is an existential threat. But what they're not talking about is the existential threat of nuclear war and World War III, which is exactly where we sit today because of the warmongers and their puppets, Joe Biden and Remember, Kamala Harris. For Tulsi, it's very important. She always has to bring up foreign policy and all this. Otherwise, Russia will stop paying her for her wonderful contribution. Glorious comrade, Tulsi Gabbard. Thank you. I want to talk about it because the, the consequence of where they have taken all of us, as the American people in the world, is economic hardship around the world, a destruction of our economic well-being, and an annihilation of humanity, our families, our kids, our communities around the world. There's a recent poll that uh, YouGov did that, that pointed out over... So what would you do right now in Ukraine if you were the president? Putin uses the N-word. I call it the N-word. He uses the N-word, the nuclear word, hmm. all the time. That's a no-no. You're not supposed to do that. He uses it on a daily basis. And everybody's so afraid, so hmm. afraid, so afraid. And as they're afraid, he uses it more and more. That's why he's doing the kind right. of things he's, he's doing. Off he's doing them because he thinks nobody's going to ever attack us hmm. because they're all stupid and they're afraid to talk I about totally it. I totally agree with you. Okay? So what would you and do about of... <laughs> This reminds me of... Um... <laughs> he must have known what he was doing, right? Do you think? I can't actually, I can't tell. I mean, it's been, it's been kind of, uh, it's been kind of eye-opening. I, I've, I've just sort of randomly here and there picked up episodes of, you know, old shows that I hadn't watched in a long time from like the early 2000s. And just the casual, um, the, the casual sort of day humor, casual use of the hard R. Um, oh, really? It's jarring. Yeah, it's, it's jarring now. And for, Casual use of hard R? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, like, okay, it was an episode of American Dad, and it was just really? like, yeah, it wasn't for shock value. It was just, just like used, Whoa. right? Well, I mean, here's the thing, right? That was in 2003 or something, like yeah. 2002. Yeah. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna deny that I dropped my fair share of hard R's back then because we didn't even, the term hard R didn't even exist. Hmm. We didn't think about it, right? And it's funny because to me, that doesn't feel like that long ago, but to my kids, are you talking like N-word hard R? What? No. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's how people use that term. No, I think that's so. the N-word. What are you guys talking about? Am I mistaken? I think so. <laughs> no, the, the one the one with the uh, with, like for like mental disability. I'm pretty sure people use hard R in a very different way than you just used it. Oh. Okay, either hard way. R means ending. I understand. The I understand. I understand what you mean. No, I'm not talking about that. Okay, cool. So I'm glad that I'm we freaking that Neo up. over here, dude. We're dodging bullets. That's yeah. bad. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you for that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> right. I forgot about the part where I said, yeah, I just like used a cat. Yeah, no, uh, actually. <laughs> I, thought I, was like, I was pretty surprised with American Dad. And then you were like, yeah, me too. I was like, whoa. Okay. Yeah, no, you've All known right. me a long time. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. Luke's like, fuck. And you go, fell on an application with H3H3. <laughs> Time to find a new podcasting job.